G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so obviously we've had the big dump. We went from 42,000, we went all the way down to I think about 30,000, maybe even wick down lower. Uh, and now Bitcoin uh, is quite volatile at the moment, it, but it's kind of ranging. It's really ranging from 35,000 to around about sort of 30,000. Now if Bitcoin continues to do this for a while, we could see an alt season. Uh, Bitcoin will fluctuate a little bit. I mean, ranging from 30, sort of 5,000 to 31,000 uh, is still pretty hectic. But look, there are gains to be made. But there is a head and shoulders pattern that's obviously forming. Uh, and I'm sure if you've been on Twitter or anything like that, you will have seen it. Uh, and we will get into that very shortly. Excuse me, but let's have a look. All right, so again, market cap come down a little bit. $960 billion or under the trillion do dollar mark, excuse me. And this could go lower, but we're not hitting panic stations yet. And look, if you've been in cryptocurrency for a while, you wouldn't hit panic stations anyway. You understand how the market works. All right, BTC dominance, 67%. Uh, ETH dominance, 12%. So Bitcoin dominance coming down a little bit. Uh, ETH dominance coming down a little bit as well. But that generally means that money's moving into the altcoins. So we could be getting ready to see uh, an alt season where you know things just go really crazy but we'll have to wait and see you know if bitcoin you know takes a big plummet from here then everything's going to bleed really really hard but if you know bitcoin sort of levels out and again even if it's just fluctuating between sort of you know 30,000 and 35,000 uh altcoins could do really well gas prices are starting to come down but still a little bit too high and anything double digits is no good you know these layer two solutions they just can't come quick enough all right, 24 hours, any big movers? Has anything done really well? Yep, there has been some. So Synthetics Network continues to go higher. I'm super bullish on this and I wish I had have bought more and I'll probably, uh, you know, hold off thinking a further dip's coming and it just won't happen. But look, that's all right. I've still got a good position in Synthetics Network anyway. But it continues to do well. It is my number one altcoin. Uh, it's done extremely well. The only thing that's performed better uh, was Aave, but Aave has been kind of sitting sort of, you know, neutral for quite some time. Still outperformed Synthetics Network over that time, but Synthetics Network continues to keep going up. Aave has just kind of plateaued, at least for me anyway, from when I got in. But look, some decent gains here, nothing too crazy. And there we go, we can see Aave there, so it does continue to go up. Uh, but again, it's not going up at the rapid... Well, no, that's not true. Again, it has gone up more than any other coin. I just I must have got in at the you know, absolute bottom of some time because it's up 800-900%. Uh, but the thing is with that, I haven't really bought into uh, back into it regularly. So I think Synthetics actually probably has outperformed it. I'll have to go back and check that. Uh, it's my favourite coin. It's the one I'm bullish on uh, and I may have to put some more funds into it. We'll wait and see though. Again, I'm happy with the position that I got. Look, one double digit move and then some single digit moves. Again, in the cryptocurrency space, single digit moves are kind of like, meh, you know, whatever, that's not too bad. <laughs> but it's, yeah, these double digit ones that we, you know, we're really after. And it's funny how, uh, you know, this is normal to us and the traditional markets and that, they just can't understand it. And I'm going to get into some. Uh, news stories soon that just show they don't understand it they haven't been able to wrap their head around it uh, and it'll probably take them a long time and they'll miss out on substantial gains but look you know that's traditional finance i'm not too worried about them all right what about losses though any big losses yep we have so verge has come down a bit but again look at this it's still up 38 percent in seven days um horizon so again it was up 75 percent so it's lost 16 percent these losses aren't too bad. Again, you know, there's a couple of double digits here, but it's not like they're big 40%, 30% losses. They're just, you know, mid to sort of low uh, double digit ones. Again, in the teens I'm talking about, not like 50 uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, and again, Dogecoin, of course, it's going to come down. It always does. Uh, that's, you know, if you know enough about cryptocurrencies, when Dogecoin starts to pump, all the alts start to pump. So generally, if you keep a bit of an eye on Dogecoin, it'll give you a good indication if alts are about to pump. Uh, and again, look, just single digit losses. And again, single digit losses, most people, you know, in cryptocurrencies are like, eh, yeah, whatever, you know, lost 5%, lost 6%. Traditional finance would 
absolutely lose their shit and they'd be freaking out. It's a collapse. The whole system's busted and it's going to zero. And that's what they always say. Everything's going to zero. Well, not to zero, but, you know, panic stations here, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous some of the crap that they put out there. Be very careful following mainstream media is what I say. Look, be careful following media uh, in general. Uh, You know, everyone's got some kind of agenda or a bias. Like I've got an agenda. I really like cryptocurrencies. I I love, I love the stuff. I love talking about it. Uh, That's why I do these daily videos. I love investing in it. I love, you know, the returns that I make. Uh, But I've now been in it long enough to understand that there's going to be a big retracement at some stage. And look, we've already had one. We lost 30%. We might lose another 40, 50% from here but i've done my research i've been here long enough i know that long term as long as i'm in good projects they're going to go up and they're going to go up in magnitude now i've got to say this every video and it's a little bit annoying but i'm not a financial advisor so none of this is financial advice it is just my personal opinion from just a normal guy who got into cryptocurrencies a few years ago uh, and has just basically followed them ever since i like to think i have a little bit of knowledge Uh, i'm not saying i'm uh I'm an expert by any means, but I'm far from a novice. All right, so we've seen the losers and we've seen uh, the winners. Let's go have a look at Bitcoin. So as we can see, pumped up. We got all the way up to 42 and then what did it dip down to? What was it? 20, 30,000. There we go. So we got to 30,000, but we've really kind of consolidated around 33,000. Again, we wicked down. But if you go into the lower time frames, it's forming a bit of a head and shoulders pattern. So we'll quickly have a look at that now. So I'll put this here on Twitter. This head and shoulders pattern in the four hour BTC uh, chart is a little worrying. And it is, if it breaks, it means we could go a whole lot lower. So let's have a look, I'll enlarge this. So this is the four hour. So we got the shoulder, we got the head, we get the next shoulder uh, and it's going down. And really we don't wanna break really, you know, about, let's just say roughly the $30,500 mark. If we break that down, then we could drop, little uh, relief rally, but drop further, relief rally, drop further. Now, it's not guaranteed that we're going down to 24,000, but it is completely possible. It's possible we go a whole lot lower. I just don't see it happening at the moment though. There's still a lot of bullish sentiment out there. So, you know, make your own mind up. But I'd say if we go below the 30,500 with a proper close, uh, then yeah, chances, and I'm looking more on the daily than the hourlies. The hourlies, you know, again, it's not that I don't uh, use the hourlies much, but I generally just follow the day. So I need to see a candle close on a day go below 30,000 to think that we're going lower. And again, you know, maybe we stop down here at around about sort of, you know, 29,000 ish. You know, we got some support here. And then again, these levels, that's what I said, we come down to this level, and then we come down to this level, and then we come down to this level, and then look, maybe we come all the way down, you know, to this level down here. I did show yesterday the uh, moving averages, uh, and they were quite low. But again, no guarantees, we'll wait and see. All right, so some of the interesting stories that I found. So crypto leaders worry over threat from big tech censorship. So you see Donald Trump got banned from Twitter and other platforms and that, and I'm not disagreeing with that happening, but I'm not exactly agreeing with it either. I do think people have the right to, you know, sort of free speech, but again, well, not again, but I also agree that, you know, if you're inciting hate uh, and, you know, creating riots and all the rest of it, then no, you probably should be censored uh, and not allowed on there, you know. I mean, the tweet he put out was, you know, March on White House didn't, you know, say March on White House and mess the joint up, but still, yeah, that's what it led to anyway. So maybe on occasions like that, I kind of agree, but, you know, in general, I don't agree with any kind of censorship. I think everyone has a right to say what they want but again, there is that tiny little caveat. It's, you know, to a certain point, you know, someone posting up, oh, I think we should go out and kill all these people. No, 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 we can't have anything like that. That's where that caveat applies for me. Now, just my personal opinion. But we go down here. A change to WhatsApp's terms of service have triggered a mass exodus from the messaging platform to more private and independent rivals like Telegram and Signal, which have registered millions of new users over the last week. Now, Telegram on the crypto front is full of scams. It's just scam after scam after scam, really. I, I, I don't like it. It's not, you know, that there aren't 
good pages there, but you just constantly get bombarded with people pretending to be uh, part of that, you know, Telegram group, uh, and you know, giving you links to click on and all the rest of it, and send you money here, and you know, we got the new token and it'll double and blah blah blah. It's just rubbish. I don't use Telegram at all. Uh, well, I haven't used it in a long time. There's too many scams on there for me, but. You know, that's one of the things about uh, censorship resistant platforms is that, you know, those things are, you know, free reign. So, again, take it with a grain of salt uh, and don't know much about Signal. But rather than agreeing to new terms specif specifying the app's right to share user data with Facebook, millions of WhatsApp users simply gave up using the platform, abandoning it for less intrusive competitors. Tel Telegram alone has been downloaded 25 million times in the last 72 hours. So, look, um, decentralization is the way of the future. Centralized things, are, you know, they're not going to collapse and completely go nowhere, but they are, I think, going to phase out over the long term. But I do see uh, a big fight from centralized uh, things in the future. But decentralization is the way to go. It needs to be regulated. I think decentralized things need to be regulated. And again, when someone steps out of the terms of, you know, just going too far and, you know, outright scams need to be removed, plain and simple. Uh, hate speech and all the rest of it needs to be removed, plain and simple. But people just not agreeing with things and all the rest of it and saying they think it sucks, uh, they have the right to say that. So uh, interesting, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, don't really, you know, use it a whole lot myself. I have used it, and eh, it is what it is. But yeah, obviously uh, censoring people, people are moving on. Now this I found very interesting. All right, so Vitalik Buterin promotes social recovery wallets to help retrieving funds after losing the private keys. This is a massive issue at the moment, and there's a story with a bloke who's lost, I don't know, 7,000 Bitcoin, which are worth $200 million or something, and you have 10 goes... Uh, trying to remember the seed phrase. He's got two left and then he loses all the money. Uh, and I'd never heard of this until I read this, but I think this is a fantastic idea. Uh, and I think this will be the way of the future. Still has its uh, sort of hiccups and things that we have to watch out for, but I think it's much better. So I won't go through the whole story, but I'll come down here. So what are social recovery wallets? Social recovery wallets work like an ordinary wallet, except that they add guardians to the equation. Guardians are a group of people with the ability to sign a petition from the original wallet owner to facilitate access if the owner loses or forgets their keys for any reason. These third parties would ideally be anonymous to each other. This would avoid the possibility of communication between guardians that could be detrimental to the wallet owner. The owner would contact them separately if necessary and they would uh, not know the key to the original wallet. I love this idea. This is brilliant. Uh, I think this will be the way of the future. This will come in for for one hundred percent sure. And again, it's got to be set up so you know people you know can't know who the other people are and go after your wallet and all the rest of it. Uh, and I'm sure they can do that. I'm sure there's technology uh, that may, if it's not out now, it'll be out in the future. And this will be a much better way because people do lose that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, it, it's a worry. And, you know, if you have bad players who then start to sort of, you know, bribe you and say, oh, well, it's going to cost you this for me to do it for you, then there should be a system where you basically go and out them for doing it. Uh, and then, you know, they'll be, you know, blacklisted and all the rest of it. Uh, and no one will do the same for them. You know, hopefully they have some kind of system like that where bad users, you know, a lot like staking, people aren't doing the right thing. Uh, there's a penalty for it. Uh, and that's the way you get around that. Uh, but I really love this. Social recovery wallets uh, sounds amazing. I think this will be the way of the future. Uh, it's just too hard to keep, you know, all the different seed phrases and things for all the different wallets and stuff you have. I mean, you know, if you've got all your stuff on just one wallet, be careful. Uh, if you lose, you know, the key to that, then everything's gone. So, you know, my personal opinion is have a few different wallets, have two ledgers, have a cold wallet, you know, hot wallets, and keep some stuff on exchanges. Now, not too much on exchanges. Uh, be very, very careful there. But, yeah, that's just my personal opinion, though. You know, you've got to work out your own system, do your own 
research and find out what works for you. Because it, again, you know, if you've got multiple wallets uh, like I do, then you know you've got to keep multiple seed phrases and all the rest of it. Uh, and that's a, a mission in itself. But social recovery wallets, uh, loving it, loving it, loving it. I think this will be the way of the future. But you know, time will tell. Right, Hester Pierce. So she says SEC can take a fresh look at crypto under the Biden network. So she's the new uh, person coming in to uh, run the SEC. And look, sounds good, but you know, it's easy to say stuff like that uh, on your way in. It's whether you get in and actually do it. You know, like politicians and that, they make a lot of promises and not all of them follow through with it. Uh, so yeah, what, what does she mean by a fresh look at crypto? Does that mean, you know, she doesn't, like now she's you know crypto mum so it's unlikely but again she's now going to be under pressure from biden to do you know all these kind of different things and he he'll have his own kind of agenda so while some of it may be really good and that's what they spruik it oh look at this you know it's like when they're giving out these stimulus checks at the moment look we're giving you stimulus checks and everyone loves it because they don't really understand the downside to it so again i like heck uh oh sorry I like Hester Pierce, you know, crypto mum. She's been very uh, crypto uh, positive, but she does have a boss to answer to. And is he as crypto positive? And what kind of regulations does he want? And what kind of pressure will be he be putting on her to make certain things happen? Who knows? Uh, it's still positive that, you know, at least they want to have a, have a look at it. They're not just saying they want to come in and ban it, but scary thing is maybe that's the fresh look that they go radio uh, it needs much more regulation and they come in and just smash everyone that would be horrible now over here so brian brooks uh there's talk that he's leaving the occ uh in the next few days because he was trump's uh, he was put there by trump and the biden uh obviously you know the Biden administration is coming in. Uh, and that's really sad. I've really loved what uh, Brian Brooks has done for cryptocurrencies. And hopefully, you know, uh, Hester Pierce coming in is going to be very similar. Uh, I think it's a real shame Brian Brooks is leaving. And uh, I'm not sure where he's going, but I hope it's uh, sort of staying in this space. And look, to be honest, I'd, I'd love for him to stay uh, at the OCC, but it sounds like that's kind of uh, already been determined. But what I really liked was down here. So Brian Brooks, the current U.S. comptroller of uh, yeah comptroller of the currency, argues that decentralized finance could pave the way for a kind of self-driving bank. Look, if we could have a banking system that was just a smart contract, that wasn't you know lopsided to you know helping the rich and you know you know dumping on the poor and all the rest of it, that's what we need. That is 100% what we need, a self-driving bank that, you know, isn't driven by, you know, you know, bosses who are, you know, have to make sure they give enough money uh, to the uh, people who've invested and then have to make sure they give themselves absorbent fees for, you know, drumming up X amount of business, you know, getting lurks and perks and all the rest of it. We need just a smart contract that works for everyone, that is fair to everyone. I believe that is the future. I think decentralized finance like that will literally be the way of the future. I think there will be a big battle that will come somewhere along the way. I think uh, banks and that will start to use decentralized finance, uh, you know, along with their centralized versions. Uh, but for me, I think this will be the way of the future, where it's it's not a person uh, that is you know dictating how much money goes here and how much money goes there. It is you know decentralized to make sure that you know. Again, everyone's basically acting on the best, uh, the best proviso of you know everyone using it, not just a few individuals. And again, you know, basically money for the rich and uh, very little for the poor. So uh, yeah, I hope that that's the way they go. Uh, we still need people, you know, to kind of work at banks. I guess not so much banks, but you know, we need to have someone that we can you know talk with when there's issues and all the rest of it. So banks, you know, even though a smart program uh, will hopefully sort of run everything, we'll still need humans that we can talk to and there's always going to be things that they can spruik it and make it better and all the rest of it. But smart program banking, I think that's the way of the future. All right, Bank of America predicts mother of all bubbles for Bitcoin. So here we go. Uh, and now another guy, and he's been around for a while, Noriel Rubini, aka Dr. Doom. The price of Bitcoin is totally manipulated by a bunch of people, 
by a bunch of whales. So is traditional finance. How's that for you, Mr. Rabini? So is traditional finance. The price of gold's been manipulated. Price of stocks has been manipulated. Uh, banks and wealthy people uh, manipulate all the systems. So please stop filling people's head with this rubbish that Bitcoin is totally manipulated by a bunch of people and a bunch of whales. It's like, uh, you know, that rhetoric that was out there before. Bitcoin's only used by criminals. What an absolute crock of crap do some you know nefarious people use bitcoin of course they do nowhere near as many crooks use bitcoin as what use cash cash is the biggest manipulated thing out there and so for them to come out and say that that is just people who are being naive and are part of the old system and don't want to let the old system go they want it to stay that way again they want the system where the rich stay rich and the poor uh, stay poor and you know unless you come up with something crazy and a you know and again you're like you're some Jeff Bezos or uh, Zuckerberg you can't get into the club until then you've got to stay uh, and you know slave your ass off seven days a, you know five days a week some people seven days a week for basically you know three quarters of your life uh, to just have enough to you know get by and then maybe if you're lucky leave something for your kids I can't stand when I see stuff like this this is so annoying now look we go over here and we've got New Zealand watchdog issues warning on crypto investments following Bitcoin's latest drop. This is just people and institutions that have an agenda, but uh, generally just don't understand it. Is crypto highly volatile? 100% it's highly volatile. That's what's so good about it. You need to, you know, as long as you're not silly and come in at a real bad time and dump everything in a real shit project and in a real shit time, you just got to hold. Now, again, that's not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. But Bitcoin, it's been here for 12 years. It just keeps repeating the same cycle over and over and over again. If you've done your research and you believe in it, it's no different to stocks. They do the same thing. They go up wildly sometimes and then down wildly, just not as much. But with all this stimulus stuff, they do. And look at what happened to COVID. It dropped you know, by record levels never seen. So for them to come out and say some of this crap, it just really annoys me. So we go down here. The FMA shares the FCA's concern that some crypto exchanges are promising high returns and customers should be prepared to lose all their money. All right, I don't know who's promising uh, high returns, but look, the statistics are at the moment, if you're in a good project, it's going to go up massively. It's going to come down massively. And then it's going to go up massively again. That is what it, that's what they do. It's just they don't understand it. Now, when I say that, please be oh so careful with some of the altcoins. They really are fly-by-night stuff. And what is popular now may not be popular next year or even tomorrow. It could go pop and, you know, all, all the rest of it. But Bitcoin... Jeez, it's been around for a long time. I just find it hard to believe that it's not just going to keep on going the way it's going. You know, they talk about you could lose all your money. You can put your money into Facebook and Tesla and something catastrophic happens tomorrow and you lose all your money. Is it likely? No. That's the same with Bitcoin at the moment, though. It just doesn't have 50 years to kind of prove itself. But how long's Facebook been around? Since, I don't know, 2007? So Facebook's only been around for maybe a year or two longer than Bitcoin. How is it that they say, you know, oh, Facebook's a great stock to invest in, but Bitcoin's not. It's been around for longer and it's way outperformed Facebook. It's worth more money. So be very careful listening to some of the rhetoric that comes out because it's it's agenda based and it's people who just don't know and just don't understand and don't want to know. They're from the old financial uh, traditional markets. They don't want things to change. They've got their, you know, walled garden where, again, the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor. And now something new is coming along that is going to change things and make it fairer for all. They don't want it. And they're going to try and FUD the hell out of it so they can buy as much of it up as they can. And that's what I think a lot of it is. Not so much uh, these government agencies, but, you know, when they tell you that, you know, it could go to zero and, you know, it's this and it's that. 
No, and you know, again, they tell you, oh, it's you know completely manipulated by a bunch of whales. Hey, so is the current system that we have. It's no different. Uh, completely manipulated by a bunch of whales and governments that are uh, you know use cash, uh, you know, to enslave uh, their people. So yeah, I've gone on a bit of a rant and a bit of a t a bit of a tangent. Uh, and again, none of this is financial advice. You know, please, I, I say this with as you know as much sincerity as I can. Don't get into crypto if you don't understand it. You need to research it first. You need to check, you know, understand how the cycles work. If you dump all your money into crypto now, you could lose 50% of it or more tomorrow. But if you have put it into good projects, and for me, not financial advice, I think Bitcoin's a good project, I think Ethereum's a good project. Those two I really think are they're here to stay, they're not going anywhere. You may lose, you know, seventy-five percent of what it's worth tomorrow putting it in today. But in five to ten years' time, if it just keeps playing out the way that it has, I, I can't imagine what it might be worth. But possibly, and again, just possibly, twenty times more than it is today. But unfortunately, it's going to be worth seventy-five percent less uh, tomorrow than what it was today. That's how it works. Once you understand that, once you do the research, find the good projects. They're, they're, Cryptocurrencies are just kind of similar to the, you know, I've got to be careful saying this. They are similar to stocks, as in they're going to be like a, a, a set of stairs, but, you know, a little bit more jagged. Mountaintops is a better one. Goes up a little bit, and then there's a steep drop off. Then goes up a little bit more than last time, and then a steep drop off. And then a little bit more than last time, and a steep drop off. That is how the cycles work. And it's worked in all investments because more people come in, then they're happy to sell, then they're happy to get back in, then they're happy to sell. Crypto is no different, but it's fixed. Most of them are fixed, they have a fixed supply, and that is why they jump up by so much. And that is why they dump by so much because it's not just uh, never ending like Tether. Uh, is uh, stable. USDC is stable because they just keep printing more out of it. Doesn't how much, doesn't really matter how much people sell or buy of it. More is being printed, so if more people sell it, then they just print more, and so that's how it stays stable. When you've got something that is fixed and there's only so much of it, of course, when lots of people start buying it, its price is going to rocket up phenomenally because it's fixed. There's only so much of it, so there's a there's a there's a squeeze there, there's less and less available. And then when everyone's happy that they've got their profits and start to sell, of course it's going to dump by a whole lot because again, it's the fixed supply. So now there's all of a sudden more available, but there's still only that much. That is what people don't understand about cryptos and that's why they're so volatile and will always kind of stay so volatile. Dependent on, you know, people buying and selling because there is a fixed amount that can't be more replicated or just randomly produced. That's why the dollar is stable, but it's losing value against everything. Because if people start selling it, they, they just print more of it and so it just kind of stays stable. And that's not exactly a great way to explain it. But, you know, if you've done your own research into the how money works, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. All right, uh, I've really gone on a bit of a tangent. Uh, you know, some of these stories just really, really frustrated me. But I also want new, uh, you know, new listeners to understand how the cycles work. But again, please, if you're going to invest in crypto, just do some research before you do. You know, plenty of stuff on YouTube. Be very careful. Plenty of scams out there. But you know, some real basic kind of stuff explaining how you know the cycles work. Try and uh, get Bitcoin cycle. Put that into YouTube, uh, and you know. You should be able to get a number of good videos and then you'll understand how the cycles work, the tops and the lows. And, you know, also do some uh, research on, you know, cryptocurrencies that have been around for a few years, the ones that have some longevity. Uh, and, you know, from there, uh, it'll just expand on, but then you can make a more informed decision about getting into cryptocurrencies. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Watch out. Alt season could be about to start if Bitcoin flattens off. Uh, or at least, you know, just kind of ranges altcoins are going to go crazy and leave a message down below if you think alt season is about to really uh, step off or if Bitcoin's going lower, hit like and subscribe. All right, hopefully you're on that gain train. We have seen some losses, but not in everything. And I'll see you next time.